It's a great irony of mental illness that we arrive here through overwhelming pain, trauma, yet the path to resolving trauma is also painful. It's damned if I do, damned if I don't. If I stick with myself and kind of don't really do anything about how I feel and what's going on in my life, I'm going to be manipulated by the unconscious, unresolved, deep pain. I'm going to be manipulated by symptoms, which are a result of something that's unconscious. But if I take steps to realistically confront my symptoms and the unresolved pain and getting myself out there again, it's painful also. I'm stuck with pain if I don't do anything. I'm encountering new pain if I do do something. It's like there is an inherent anxiety and pain to life itself. Anybody mentally healthy or mentally ill has to continuous, continuously or continually adapt to life, meet new people, try new things, make sacrifices, grow, experience loss. So to the mentally ill, it's like, why would I put on myself that extra pain when I'm already dealing with so much pain? It gets so bad it can get so bad that it says, I can't deal with that extra pain. I have enough already. I can't get out there and make sacrifices and relate with new people and work or uh, things of this nature. I have too much pain already to encounter anything more. But it's not only the new pain of getting out there that's intolerable. It's even directly resolving this trauma itself is painful. The path to healing is painful, just like the path to growing no matter who you are or where you are in life, is painful. So this is another reason that people who struggle with mental illness, they're inhibited to, to get themselves out there and encounter new pains, anxieties, fears, uncertainties, and they're inhibited from, from uh, pursuing healing because that's painful too. The trauma is stuck in your system, and in order for it to come out, which is a very great way of phrasing it, it has to become conscious again. It's unconscious, which is why it controls your life through symptoms. If it's going to not control your life through symptoms, you can't just figure out what the symptoms are and they resolve themselves because that's not how it works. The reason there are symptoms is because it's below a level that you can address with your thought. It needs to come into consciousness again. It needs to be felt. It needs to be experienced. It needs to become conscious experience. But that includes thought, but not on the level of this distant analysis and deconstruction of, of symptomatology. In order for it to come out, it has to go through the layers of yourself again. I have to talk about these things again. I have to feel triggered about this stuff throughout my life. I have to feel these things again. I have to revisit this place again. I have to experience these things again. Because it's so damned if I do, damned if I don't. Like if I'm stuck with myself, I have this overwhelming uh, unconscious pain that manipulates me through symptoms. But if I try to heal it, it's also painful. No wonder people stuck dealing with symptoms of mental illness feel that things are meaningless, their efforts are futile, and there's no hope because there's nowhere to go from here that isn't an encounter of pain. With all this being said, it is the kind of moral courage then to find someone to talk to about this, to try to bridge the gap. This is what it is, talking to someone about this. And I'm not talking about just a life coach because I'm a life coach or just a therapist. Anybody at all. The point is to bridge the gap between what lies at the bottom of your soul, which is this void caused by trauma. Bridge the gap between that and reality. You're trying to bring it out so that it can enter consciousness so that it can be resolved. Because as long as it's unconscious, it can't be resolved because there's no, there's no resolution for unconscious stuff. It's like saying, it's like a desperate attempt to change the way you are. But the, uh, the way you are is mostly unconscious. You can only change yourself so much because you only have so much con conscious access to who you are. When trauma is in the unconscious, you can't do anything about it. It has to come out, and this, this happens through bridging the gap between where it is at the bottom of your heart and where you are at the kind of top of your head, which is this meeting ground where your heart kind of lies. 
through real experience and openness and vulnerability and intimately connecting and putting yourself out there and having the courage and having the fighting spirit. I'm just going to do it. Like, yeah, this sucks, but there's no other option. And you know, sometimes it takes getting to that point. Wow, there really is nothing else to do before this journey is taken seriously. But this is why people struggling with mental illness are forced to become so real because there's no other option for them in life, right? We can try to uh, escape and fantasize and uh, adorn new ideologies and sed sedate ourselves. But at the end of the day, the only path forward for people dealing with symptoms of mental illness, and believe it or not, everybody is neurotic to, to uh, one or another degree. There is this inherent distance between our subjectivity and reality, and our lives are like an attempt at bridging the gap. And this is just doubly true for people who struggle with mental illness who have this greater distance to bridge. And because of the nature that the, the distance is greater, that's why they have to become so darn real in order to bridge the gap the type of character they have to build, the type of fortitude they have to hone, the type of this, this type of thing, it's so great that you're just forced to become so real as a result of it, unless it's overwhelming and then you just, you struggle to become real at all. If this is something you resonate with, you can schedule a free 30 minute sample session with me by clicking the first link in the description. Reach out to me through Instagram at Coach David Adess or through my email, david at dyingtolive.blog. Like this video if you do, comment your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to see more, and I will talk to you soon.